This video will show you how to solve systems of equations algebraically. There are two methods, substitution and elimination. So it'll take us two videos to get through the substitution method. Substitution is just what it sounds like. You have a system of equations. You have two equations, two variables. And we can't solve that unless we get down to just one variable. And one way to make that happen is to make a substitution. Since y is equal to this 3x minus 1, we are going to take that 3x minus 1 and substitute it in for y, which will give us this on the next line. We're taking that y out of the equation, and in its place we're putting 3x minus 1. So just showing you here's the y, and in its place we're putting 3x minus 1. Notice we don't have any y's. All we have are x's. We have one variable. So this is pretty easy to solve. Just finish out your distributive property and then combine your like terms, 2x plus 9x makes 11x, and now you're down to just a basic two-step equation. Add 3 to both sides, which gives you 22, divide both sides by 11, and we have an answer of x equals 2. Now that's just x. Remember what you're doing when you're solving a system of equations. You are finding the point of intersection. We need to have x comma y. So if x equals 2, it's very easy to find y, and it's a matter of plugging back into this equation up here that says y equals. Notice I circled this equation in the beginning for two reasons. One is to show what I was substituting, but the other is that's an indicator that that's where we're going back to do our solving for the other variable. So we're going to plug 2 in place of that x. That's this arithmetic over here. That was x. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. We have the ordered pair 2 comma 5. That means if we were able to graph these, the point of intersection would be the point 2, 5. Now to check this, since I used this equation to figure out y, I'm going to use this equation as my check. I'm going to plug 2 in for x and plug 5 in for y. And that's this right here. This was my x, this was my y. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 5 is 15. Add that up as 19, it checks. So the point of intersection really is 2, comma 5. Notice in this equation we have x equals something. In the previous equation we had y equals something. It really doesn't matter. It's just important that we have one of the equations written such that we have a variable totally alone. x equals 4y plus 3. So we're going to circle this up. Since that's x equals whatever, we're going to stuff that in for x. So on this next line, we're taking the x out of there, and in its place, we're putting 4y plus 3. I think about this being like a substitution in a soccer game or a football game. This person x comes out of the game, and in his place goes 4y plus 3. Everybody else on the field stays exactly where there were. So 3y, the equal to 17, the 2 is all in the same place. We are only taking x out, and in its place, we're putting this 4y plus 3. Clean up the equation by using your distributive property. We have like terms here, 11y plus 6 equals 17. Plain old two-step equation to solve, subtract 6 from both sides. We have 11y equals 11, divide both sides by 11, so y equals 1. We are going to substitute back into this equation up here, the one I have circled. Since we know what y is, we need to go into the equation that's going to tell us what x is. This is the one that says x is. So we're going to plug this all the way back up in here. That's this arithmetic right here. We put 1 in for y and do the arithmetic and we get 7. Now be careful. When you write your ordered pair, it needs to be in the form x comma y. It is not what I find first comma what I find second. This was x. It needs to go in the first position. And then when you check, you need to be sure you put 7 in for x and put 1 in for y, not the other way around. Here's your check. Since I went into this equation, this is the equation I'm going to use for my check. I put 7 in for x, 1 in for y. There's my arithmetic. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 1 is 3. It does check. That means 7, 1 is my solution. 7, 1 is the point of intersection. Now, to be able to solve by substitution, you have to have an equation that is solved for either x or y, meaning x or y must be alone. I don't have that here. I can make it happen, but just looking at those equations right now, I don't have an x or a y all by itself. I could solve this equation for x, but that wouldn't be a good idea because I would create fractions. Or I could solve this equation for y. Not a good idea because I would create fractions. This 
and this are my variables that do not have coefficients. So either one of those would be an option for solving. X is the better option because it's positive. So all I did here was subtract 3y from both sides, which brings the 3y over here. Now I have my lone variable, x equals negative 3y. That's the one I will go back to at the end. That's the one I'm going to substitute into this equation. Not this one, because this is the equation I rewrote to get this. So that x equals negative 3y has to be substituted into the other equation. So putting negative 3y in place of that x gives us this statement. Clean that up, negative 6y minus y. You might change that to plus a negative if it helps you. You might put a 1 here if that helps you. That's negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7y. Divide by negative 7 and we get y equals 1. So we need to stuff that 1 in for y up in this equation to find x. So 1's going in for y. Here's the arithmetic. We get x equals negative 3. Same thing I said a minute ago. It's got to be x comma y, not what I found first comma what I find second. Checking, since this is the equation I rewrote here, this is the equation I would like to plug into to check. So the negative 3 is going in for x and the 1 is going in for y. That's that arithmetic right there. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus 1. Change to plus a negative if you want, which does give negative 7 which verifies that we have done this correctly. Okay, another one like that. I need to solve for a lone variable. In this case, I only have one choice. This is the only variable I have that does not have a coefficient. Every other one has a coefficient, which means when you solve for x or y, you're going to create fractions. And you don't want to have an expression with fractions because it's just going to lead to more arithmetic mistakes. So this is the equation I need to work on. So I have just rewritten this over here. Here's the work. Subtract 5x from both sides. Gives me negative y equals this. I don't want negative y. I need this to be positive y, which means all I have to do is change these signs. Makes 5x minus 4. Now what this is, it's just an alternate way to get the y alone. Instead of this, I added y to both sides. And the reason I did that is that made the y positive. And then I subtracted 4 back to the other side. Either way, I have this expression, y equals 5x minus 4. Since the first equation is the one I used to get my rewrite, that y needs to get plugged into the second equation. So y goes out, and in its place, I have 5x minus 4. Be careful, that is negative 4 times both of those. So we're going to have a sign change. That's going to give us negative 20x plus 16 equals negative 18. Combine your like terms. 3x minus 20x is negative 17x. Subtract 16 from both sides. And now we have negative 17x equals negative 34. Divide both sides by negative 17, which gives us x equals 2. I need to plug that back in to find y. And where I'm going to plug it is right here where I have the circled equation. So x was 2 to find y. I just have to put 2 in for x. And that's the arithmetic right there, 5 times 2 which is 10 minus 4 is 6. My ordered pair is 2 comma 6. Since it was the first equation I used to get this rewrite, I'm going to plug into the second equation for my check. So that will be 3 times 2. That's 2 going in for x and 6 going in for y. So 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 6 is 24. 6 minus 24 is negative 18.